Do you suffer vertigo or dizziness, but you also have neck pain? If you answered yes to those questions, you may be suffering cervical vertigo or cervicogenic dizziness. In this video, we're going to go over a little bit about what cervical vertigo is, and we're going to give you three easy to do exercises at home that have been clinically proven to decrease your symptoms. Let's get into the video and we'll take a look. Well, welcome back to another episode of Physio Tips with Mauro. I'm your host, Mauro Burnett. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a board certified orthopedic specialist in physical therapy and the owner of Australian Physiotherapy Specialist located here in Jacksonville, Florida. For today's video, we're going to stay on the same theme that we were on on the last video a couple weeks ago, in case you missed that one. We were talking about cervical dizziness or cervical vertigo. What is cervical vertigo? I'm glad you asked. When your neck gets sore, especially in the upper portion of your neck, you have seven vertebra, C1, 2, 3, etc., all the way to C7. When your upper neck, C1, 2, and 3, become irritated, sore, inflamed, maybe from an arthritic condition, maybe from an injury, some of the symptoms that you could start to experience include headache, dizziness, nausea, disequilibrium, um, lightheadedness, and ultimately symptoms that people would refer to as a type of vertigo. 1955, two doctors named Ryan and Cope, they were doing investigative work on the upper neck and they injected anesthetic drugs into the neck and they found that it created a dizziness or vertigo-like symptoms for themselves as they were experimenting on themselves. Now when we think of cervicogenic dizziness, most people will describe it as you feel off, you feel unsteady, you feel dizzy, but it's not a brief 30 second severe spinning that we would think about when people describe vertigo. So if we want to eliminate these symptoms, the first thing we have to do is we have to improve the neck. We have to improve the strength of the neck. We have to improve what's called the proprioception of the neck. Proprioception is something we talked a little bit about in our last video. It's a position sense awareness. Right? If, I, if I close my eyes and I lift my arm, I know that's a 90 degree lift of my arm. I know that's thumb up. I know that's palm up. I knew where my arm was in space without visual feedback because I have nerves embedded in my shoulder joint called proprioceptors. They sense where my body parts are at even without visual feedback. <clears throat> when we have an ankle sprain and we do rehab for some of the ankle sprain, we not only do strength exercises for the ankle, but we also do a lot of balance and proprioception exercises. Studies show that it improves your joint stability of your ankle and it lessens reoccurrences of ankle sprain. Well, it turns out that using proprioceptive exercises for the neck has also been clinically shown to improve uh, decreasing neck pain, improving your joint stability, and ultimately lessening headaches, dizziness, nausea, and all of those symptoms that can come from the upper neck. So for this video, let's get into just three exercises. We're going to look at an exercise to strengthen the muscles in the front of the neck, the deep neck flexors. They play a very vital role in stabilizing the neck. And then we're going to look at an exercise for the muscles in the back of the neck, the cervical extensor muscles. They also play a very important supportive roles. And then lastly, we're going to show you a proprioceptive exercise. So let's get into the first exercise where we're looking at deep neck flexors. For our first exercise, looking at the deep neck flexors, what we're going to do is we're going to show you a couple different alternatives to strengthening your deep neck flexors. If you're suffering neck pain and you have dizziness, it may be where one person can do exercise A, another person might say, I don't like that exercise, it makes me feel bad. So I'm gonna to try to give you a couple options, right? Uh, because not everything works for everyone all the time. And if we show you some of these exercises, they just don't go well for you, they stir up your symptoms and make you feel bad, hey, skip it, disregard. But if this does go well for you, they have the potential to really help. So the first exercise we're gonna talk about is we can activate our deep neck flexor muscles by um, a couple of functional exercises. The first one is 
when we have a good, decent posture. By that I mean if I sit up at my pelvis and I'm not too far slumped, but I'm not too far hyperextended, I'm right in the middle. If you think about your tailbones that we sit on, try to orient yourself so you're right in the middle. You could kind of play around with this at home. Go all the way back on your tailbones, that's one extreme. All the way off your tailbones, that's another. And then you kind of settle into this halfway point. If you can attain that position for your lower back and then get your chin relatively neutral, studies show that you've already activated those deep neck flexor muscles that we need for joint stability. Just as a small side note, there's two big things that weaken the deep muscles of the neck and destabilize the neck joints. The first one is the presence of pain or inflammation. While you're in pain, pain reflexively inhibits those muscles, which then destabilize your joints and make you more vulnerable for irritating your neck. The second one is low weight bearing positions. Low weight bearing positions, would, we would start with bed rest. Bed rest is as low weight bearing as you can get. You're lying down, you're not challenging your spine muscles when you're lying down, you're not challenging your spine bones. If you're feeling bad and you're in bed a lot, guess what? You're gonna get very weak through those very important stabilizing muscles of your neck. So as you start to improve, maybe with some of these exercises, and if you notice you've been doing a lot of bed rest because you feel really bad, the great goal is to slowly start getting yourself out of bed. At least maybe every 30 minutes you get up, you try to get into a good posture, maybe just walk around for two or three minutes. It can be life-changing. If you notice that, gosh, 22 out of 24 hours, I'm lying down or reclining or sitting down. You're never going to get your strength back with low weight-bearing positions all day long. Those are my toughest cases. So two things that can make your neck weaker. One is pain. One is low weight-bearing. We need those stability muscles to protect your neck. So let's look at a couple options. First option, we talked about just being in the neutral position. In this scenario, maybe if you work in front of a computer, every 15 minutes that you're at work, try to find this position, get your chin level, relax your shoulders, and just hold it for 10 seconds. You may not feel like you're doing very much, but in this position, you're taking stress off your joints and you're stimulating those deep neck flexors to work. Okay, so that's an easy exercise. Three or four times an hour while you're at work, find that tall posture, get your chin level, relax, hold it for 10 seconds. Hey, and then back to work. Maybe you get frequent phone calls at your job. Every time you get that call, that could be the cue to get you into that tall posture. Or if you're retired and you're watching this, every commercial break maybe when you're watching TV, you could use that as a cue to get you into that tall posture. Okay, let's look at a second option. A second option goes like this. If I bring my chin a little bit up for a few inches and then I slowly bring it back down to my level start position. As I go up, my neck flexors lengthen in a controlled manner and then they shorten to bring me back to neutral. This is a great exercise. You look straight ahead. If it doesn't make you feel too dizzy, doesn't hurt your neck too bad, find a range of motion that doesn't hurt. Gently up, gently back down. See if you can build up to where you can do a couple sets of 10, maybe eventually two or three sets of 10. And this could be a great exercise twice a day for strengthening the deep back flexors. So there's two options. A third option is an option where we're going to be lying down and we're going to do an exercise to strengthen the neck flexors that way. We have a great segment that we did on a previous video. We're gonna to cut to that segment and I'll show you how this exercise works. For this exercise, we're gonna find ourselves lying on our back on a folded towel square. The idea with the towel square is we wanna make it just thick enough so that our head is level. Too thin and you might find yourself with your head cocked back a little bit. Too thick, and you might find yourself with your head too far forward. Once you get the towel square set up properly, we're gonna then begin the exercise. This exercise is to retrain muscle control. It's the head nod and holding exercise. This is an important exercise to retrain the deep neck muscles of the front of your neck for pain relief and muscle control. You lie on your back with knees bent without a pillow under your head and neck. If this is not comfortable, place a small folded towel under your head for support. Start by looking up at a point on the ceiling. Then with your eyes, Look at a spot on the wall just above your knees. 
Feel the back of your head slide up the bed as you perform a slow and gentle nod, as if you are indicating yes. While doing the exercise, place your hand gently on the front of your neck to feel the superficial muscles. Make sure that they stay soft and relaxed when doing the head nod movement. Stop at the point that you sense the muscles are beginning to harden, but keep looking down with your eyes. Hold this position for 10 seconds and then relax. Look up to a point on the ceiling to resume the starting position, and then you repeat the exercise 10 times. This is a great exercise to do twice a day and maybe eventually three times a day. Fantastic for decreasing neck pain and dizziness. Now we're going to look at an exercise for the back of the neck. The deep muscles in the back of the neck, they're called the cervical extensor muscles. Just like the muscles in the front, they play a very important role for stabilizing your neck and keeping symptoms like headaches, dizziness, and nausea, keeping those away, right? So let's look at a couple options. The first option goes like this. Maybe I'm in my dining room table and I kind of belly up to it. I'm going to lean over on my elbow so I'm a little bit against gravity. I'm going to lower the weight of my head nice and easy in a pain-free way, in a dizzy-free way, and then come back up. This is one. This is two. If everything goes well, I might do a set of 10 or 15 reps, and eventually maybe two or three sets of 10 or 15. Nice and slow, nice and easy. Good detail is you don't want to hold while you're in the down position. That puts a little stress on your neck. You just carefully go down and carefully go back up. Another good detail is when you come up, you don't have to go all the way really high coming up. That could put a lot of stress and strain on your neck. Lower it a little bit, come back up, keep everything in a really pain-free, dizzy-free range, and that can be a great exercise to start strengthening the muscles in the back of the neck. A great goal, get to where you could do three or four sets of 10. Hey, that can be a once a day exercise. Even if you only did that three or four times a week, it's a great exercise to start getting that strength back in the back of your neck. Let's look at another option of this exercise for strengthening the back of the neck. The next exercise, I'm gonna get kind of a hands and knees position, and then I'm gonna lower the weight of my head, look down towards my knees, and then come back to my fingertips. Look down and back up. For some of my patients, this exercise is pretty doable and it might even be easier than the other exercise. And in other instances, the other exercise is easier. Either way, those are a couple great options that you can look at, either a hands and knees style exercise. Um, you can do this on an area rug, you could do this on a yoga mat, you could do it even in your bed if you needed to. If you have bad wrists, maybe bad knees, the hands and knees option doesn't go well, try the leaning on your elbows option. But either way, that gives you a couple different options to strengthen the back of the neck. Let's take a look at proprioception on our next exercise. For our third and final exercise, we're going to look at a great exercise to improve your proprioception. Remember, improved proprioception improves your joint stability, which lessens your neck vulnerability, lessens episodes of neck pain, ultimately lessens dizziness, vertigo, headaches, and neck pain, etc. So we want this proprioception to improve. Studies show neck pain inhibits proprioception and it makes it poor, right? So we need to sharpen our proprioception. So I have an LED headlamp here from Lolomo that I got off of Amazon. And I've got a little bit of some sticky notes from the local office store. We're gonna need both of these. This is what the headlamp looks like. It fits on the head. It has a flashlight on the bottom that I can activate. And then it has this laser on the top. Okay, the laser on the top is what we're gonna use. And it's kind of a one size fits all. I'm going to leave a link to this in the description of the video uh, so you guys can check it out if you're interested. But the way this is going to work is I put the laser on. I'm going to put a sticky note in the center and then two sticky notes on the side, kind of equal distance. Then once I turn the laser on, I'm going to put it on my head. I rotate out to one sticky note 
and then back to the center. I kind of do that a few times to memorize the distance. Then I rotate out, I close my eyes, and I see if I remember where the center dot is. If I hit it I'm on the sticky note, that's great. And then if I start getting a couple good scores, right, I'm going to do that maybe five or ten times as I'm getting on the sticky note. Now eventually we want to maybe challenge ourselves a little more. So what I might do is draw a circle in the center of the sticky note so that now I have to be even more accurate with my relocation. So go out, close my eyes, come back and find the center. So the exercise is called find center. Once you get pretty good with the right side, you redo the same process to the left. Rotate out a few times, close your eyes, find the center and open your eyes. This can also be done by adding a sticky note above your center sticky note. And then you track up, back to the center, do that a few times, close your eyes, and find the center. So we're going to put it on, give it a go on the wall, and let you see what it looks like. Great exercise, not too, not too expensive as far as the equipment. Um, there was a researcher named Ravel from Paris, and he found that by doing these exercises and adding them to regular neck strengthening, it had a 33% better outcome for lessening neck pain. So add a little bit of proprio proprioception exercises to your strengthening. It's a great way to give yourself an advantage. Let's get into the exercise on the wall. All right, so we've got my headlamp on. I'm going to activate my laser. And now what I'm going to do is aim towards the board here. And I'm going to go to the right sticky note, back to the center. This tip is adjustable, so that's kind of nice too. Back to the sticky note, back to the center. Maybe trace that a few times just to get the hang of it. And then once you get the hang of it, you go out to the right, close your eyes, and see if you remember where the center is. You hit the center of the sticky note, that's fantastic. Okay, so then I do the same thing to the left. Out to the left, back to the center. There we go. Then I go up to here, and then back to the center. Bingo. Beautiful. And that is a nice, easy proprioception exercise that you can do. A couple sticky notes, a little bit of an inexpensive headlamp. Great exercise to start improving your joint stability and lessen your pain. Well, thanks for watching today's video on cervicogenic dizziness, cervical vertigo exercises. Hope you enjoyed it. Hey, give the exercises a try. If they're comfortable, they're not making you feel too bad. Give them a try for a few days, maybe a week or two, and see if they give you some relief. If they do, drop me a comment and let me know. I'd love to hear your reports, especially if someone's out there doing a little bit better. Remember, you can subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this in the future. And if you like the video, we greatly appreciate that as well. That helps us out on YouTube. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time on Physio Tips with Mara.